you need to fall in love with your work otherwise you'll not become a successful front-end developer so if you are someone that's fairly new at learning code or if you have some experience and if you are like struggling with coding with learning it with creating applications creating a portfolio because you want to you know start a new career then you need to fall in love with working and i will touch on six points here i have them in front of me uh, on my computer because these six points i believe will give you a different perspective on why you are probably struggling with working and how to overcome them right because it's very important to understand the reason why we feel in a certain way because if we know the reason why we feel in a certain way we can change that you know that trigger and then we'll feel in a different way about work and then we'll be able to do more work so i'm a massive believer in hard work okay you should be working hard all the time okay and now a bunch of people will tell me oh you should have work-life balance and blah blah and most people who say that are broke okay and you know i don't want you to be broke and i don't want myself to be broke so i'm not going to tell you to have work-life balance actually i'm going to tell you to have work life disbalance for a very long period of time maybe till you are 35. That's kind of my goal. I want to work hard till I'll be 35, 36, and then I'm going to chill for the rest of my life. Maybe. I don't know. That's how I see it right now. But what I want to talk about today is that the fact that going to work is different than working. That's the first point. So if you're a teenager, right, you're like 20, let's say, maybe in your 20s, you're not a teenager, but if you're in your 20s, early 20s, and even if you are like 35 and whatnot and you have some sort of career where you don't really use your brain, you have been capped a long time ago, you are not really growing, you are not really progressing, you are not actually working, doing something on autopilot because someone told you to do, but you are not really active in there. You are just following some instructions that have been predefined in your brain and you are not even thinking about it. Your back mic might hurt, right? you are thinking about some instructions that you are taking and you have to do some certain type of work. Maybe someone is telling you what to do and you do it. Uh, if you are in your early 20s and you go to university, someone is telling you what to do, what to study, when to study, for how long to study, etc., etc. You've been receiving, you know, commands and instructions your whole life and you don't know how to work. You confuse going to work or going to university or whatever you are doing with the actual work and it's not true that's not work that's just you know an activity that you are doing real work happens when you when you are how can i say in some sort of trance where you have to actively think okay it's kind of painful sometimes you know like for example right now i'm making this video and i'm not on autopilot okay i don't really just say things because someone is instructing me to do this or someone is telling me you have to film this video or whatever. I do it for the sake of working, if that makes sense. And to be honest, probably the only time in my day when I'm 100% you know, focused and engaged with something is when I'm shooting a video. This is my true work, shooting this video, talking to you or being in the coaching calls with my clients. That's my true focus, okay? And for you, you need to figure out what that work mode is for you, okay? This is one skill that you need to learn and to develop because work is split into a few things, right? First one is like, what is the goal for your work? What do you want to achieve by working? You cannot just do random things. You need to have some sort of goal at whatever level you are right now. You have to have some sort of goal and then you need to Ask yourself, why is that important? Why do I need to learn this technology? Why do I need to learn this language? What is the purpose of this CSS property? What is the purpose of this array method? What is the purpose of this feature of React? What? You need to always ask what, 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 why, okay? You need to be active. You cannot just be passive. You won't be able to learn 
and you won't be able to do proper work if you are passive. That's why if you are watching tutorials or YouTube videos, you think you are learning, but you are not. You are just brain dead, okay? Being entertained by someone which is making money off of you. Your clicks, your likes, people are paying for advertisement on someone's channel, and then you think you are learning, but in reality you are not. You are just making someone else money, okay? So that's something very important. And the next thing that you need to understand is that you need to pay attention. Extremely important. Um, and I see this a lot with people that are in my program, okay? I'm not really shy from hiding that because I'm working with normal people, okay? I'm not working with superhumans that have no problems. I work with people that are just like you, okay? And I noticed that they are not paying attention, okay? For example, I saw one guy, he had three classes, some iPhone and something else, three, three classes, and he was trying to target you know, that div or button, whatever it was, with CSS and he was using hyphens between his words. And I told him like three times, make sure that you understand that here, specifically here, you have three classes, not one class, even though for you it might read like one class. So I told him like multiple times and he didn't pay attention to that. And he came back to me again with the same question. You need to start to pay attention to the lines of code you are writing. The things that you are reading on MDN, the things that you are reading on W3 schools, the things that you are learning from your Udemy course or whatever you are doing, the things you are learning from TikToks, from Instagram, wherever you are trying to learn, like literally like pay attention. This is very important. Pay attention because otherwise you'll waste your time because you'll go back to the same thing and then you'll have to at some point pay attention and understand the lesson that you could have gotten way earlier. Okay. Pay attention, okay? And I'm sorry, this is not an easy video. Um, if you are someone that cannot, you know, focus for 10 minutes, then this is the next thing that you need to learn, how to focus. Programming is a, a job that, that you need to do with your brain. And if you cannot focus for more than 30 seconds, you won't be successful with this, okay? It's, it's very simple, you won't be successful something that you can train as well. It's not like you are a complete mess and then you are a superhuman. There are levels to this and you can train yourself. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it now because maybe I'm gonna do it in another video. But then if you realize, hey, I have a problem with my attention span and I'm like a fly, I cannot concentrate for more than 30 seconds, then you need to start working on that slowly but surely and then you can work on other things. The next thing that I want to talk about is delayed gratification, especially important with, uh, with JavaScript. So what is delayed gratification? Delayed gratification means doing some sort of action right now and waiting for a certain period of time, who knows how long, where you will or might not get the result. So some sort of, you know, maybe more money or seeing some sort of progress with your programming skills and whatnot. So <clears throat> we are being taught right now, you know, with all these social media apps and everything to get like instant gratification for everything. You post a picture, you get 30 likes, you feel good. Uh, you post a story on Instagram, you get some views, maybe some of your, some of your friends reply, you feel good. You see me posting a video, you click on it, you hit the like button, and then you feel good because you're watching my video, right? <laughs> or that's what I'm trying to think about, you know, how people are when they see my video. The thing is, like, the good things in life take a lot of time for them to manifest, okay? So, for example, right now I have 4,000 subscribers, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you for that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. But it took a very, very long time to get that. Like, extremely long, probably like three years. And I just knew that if I keep doing it, at some point, time is gonna help me out and it's gonna give me my result. Why am I telling you about me? I know you don't care about me, but it's the same for you. Like YouTube is a skill, programming is a skill. Programming is no different than cooking. Programming is no different than MMA. Programming is no different than going to the gym. It's just people make it like different because there is like this money attachment to it. All right, but if you learn how to delay this gratification, and you focus on the process 
over the outcomes that you will ex experience at some point, then you'll be way more fulfilled. So I work with people for over a year, right? I'm working with some people for over a year. Those people are really patient. They show up every day, they code, they ask me questions, but I'm working with them for over a year, right? These people are very committed to this process and they are delaying the gratification and they are doing every day something that's gonna give them some sort of payback later. And you need to teach yourself to wait. You need to teach yourself to wait till you get some sort of result. And I mentioned JavaScript at the beginning because it's 100% True. With HTML and CSS, like if you are good enough, or if you have like a proper system, you can see results in like one day. You can start making websites in like a week. In maximum three weeks, if you are really focused and patient and if you are like really determined, you can make like banging websites. Like I'm not even joking. If you cannot do that, that means you're not working hard enough and you don't have a system. Like HTML and CSS is super easy. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Now I'm gonna get some hate comments like, oh, for me it was difficult. Yeah, for you. But if you do it right, it shouldn't be that complicated. But the thing is you get like a quick feedback, you know, quick feedback loop, if that makes sense from HTML and CSS. And then some people jump into JavaScript and now they have like a big ego, like, you know, HTML and CSS is so easy for me. I'm like so good at it. And now I'm dealing with JavaScript and JavaScript is an absolute nightmare. Right? So now they need to understand that the gratification is going to come way later, maybe a month or two after they first started learning some code, some actual JavaScript. Yeah, I guess that's it. I said there are six things, but I just had like six bullet points, but then I realized, okay, there are actually just three things. So going to work is different than working and delayed gratification and then process over outcomes. These were the three things. Yeah, and if I add more to the process over outcomes is that you just need to get better at your thing, okay? Like if you don't get the skills and if you cannot build applications after three years, that means you're not ready, okay? And there are things that you can do to speed up, like for example, working with me and whatnot, getting a mentor, all this stuff, they'll speed it up. But still, to be able to make this career change, there is like, a totally personal makeover has to happen. Like you cannot become a developer with the same brain attitude towards life, like someone that's working as a bar back, you know, the guy that's cleaning the stuff behind the bar in the nightclub. You need to have a totally different attitude and mindset than someone that's like that. So you might have like one leg in that job and one leg in this new career. And if you do not completely change your mindset from that guy to that guy, then you won't be able to focus on the process, okay? And you won't be able to get that new job. These are things that I found to be absolutely true in these past few years since I'm doing this. And for some people it takes longer, for some people it takes, you know, very, very little time because some people fixed other things before they even started learning code. So for example, for me, Learning code was one of the easiest things I've done in my entire life, to be completely frank with you, because I already had a lot of experience teaching myself stuff, like from drawing, painting, uh, music. I, I taught myself music theory, arrangements, all this stuff. I taught myself all that stuff. So then when I started learning code, I was like, yeah, I already know how to do all this stuff. I just needed, it for me, a mentor and a roadmap because the rest I had in place. So once I figured out a few things here and there, for me, the transition was super simple. You know, I could have done it faster if I would have had like a different type of support and whatnot. These things that I've mentioned in this video are applicable to your current situation. Guaranteed, all right? I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.